you're listening to the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people. Brought to you by i Each episode features someone who sheds a little more light on the ins and outs of delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. And now, here's today's guest. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Today's guest is Bhavna Singh. Welcome, Bhavna. Thank you, Bernie. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Bhavna, as a solutioning consultant in the internal solutioning team here at i you're expert at studying structured and unstructured data to understand what it means, and in particular, to a problem that needs to be solved. So in this episode, let's unpack the method by which you and your team conduct a current state assessment in order to arrive at a future state potential within our clients' customer care programs. But first, Bhavna, as you know, we always like to begin with your introduction. Give us a bit of your backstory. Tell us how you got to your current role in your career journey. Sure, Bernie. Thank you. Uh, so, as you said, I am uh, currently um, working with the internal solutioning team with the IT. Uh, my current role is uh, I, 80% of my work is deep dive current state assessment projects. So, uh, we look for opportunities of improvement and we use digitalization and automation as a response to those opportunities. So, that's my current role. Uh, that's what I do. My background, uh, I started working uh, back in 2002, right after my graduation, um, started with this big financial services organization. Uh, and throughout my career, I you know, progressed through different roles, responsibilities. Uh, in 2011 is when uh, I, I did my PMP certification. And uh, f- followed by Lean Six Sigma Black Belt that was sponsored by my organization. This was uh, this was a IT global services company. Uh, and then I also did, like I went through extensive trainings for CMMI for services uh, and helped my organization get the level five maturity certification on the BPO side of it. Uh, in 2016 is when I joined uh, ICOR. I joined in the finance shared services and uh, helped uh, build the uh, shared services center in India. So that was my initial responsibility. After that, I moved to my current role in IT solutioning. Okay, terrific. Thank you for sharing your back your career backstory. You're very credential, uh, Bhavna. That's why I've been looking forward to this conversation on this very topic. So. Let's begin with a very high level explanation, if we can, Bhavna, by just speaking to what is meant by current state to future state assessment. What's that process look like at a high level? So as the name suggests, uh, current state assessment is where we go uh, deep into the business process and try to study it end to end. Uh, and map it as is, as as it you know as it uh, occurs today, and future state is where we identify you know all the identified recommendations. We just put it in a map and say, okay, this is how it'll look in the future state if everything is incorporated that we have found out. Okay, great. So that's high level. So now yes. let's unpack each one of those. Let's begin, of course, with current state. Why don't you explain? what the process looks like when you're doing the analysis on the current state of a client program. Mm -hmm. So uh, current state, I will uh, put it this way. We, We actually can divide it into three layers. The first layer is where we go ahead and um, look at the business model. We also look at the data in its aggregated form, the dashboards, uh, and we just, you know, interact with the highest level uh, of management, uh, the process owners. Then we come to the second layer, which is much deeper, where, you know, we just go into the process step by step. We understand what are the procedures, what are, you know, the agents doing on the shop floor, the the practical method of doing the work. Uh, Then we get into the detailed, the, the raw data, 
we start analyzing it we do our own uh, data collection if needed if if you know during the journey we we feel that we need more data inputs and and that's when we just go into you know even call call listening if it's needed so so that's the second layer where we just kind of you know unearth everything in the process then comes the third layer where the analysis bit comes we start analyzing the data that we have collected or extracted from the systems because we have all the accesses and then we also uh you know draw the process map with all the interactions that we have had at different levels because at the second level we are talking to actually uh the middle management layer and then we just bring it all together and start mapping the process then we also figure out what's the low hanging fruit what needs more analysis so basis that you know it's it's all um exploration after that at icor we're always looking for ways to optimize the customer experience we leverage Six Sigma disciplines to ask the right questions and distill the answers into a picture of current state based on interviews, observations, data collection, and analysis. We've worked with hundreds of brands, enabling us to share industry best practices to make future state recommendations that maximize results for your customer's digital CX journey. Smile with i -Corps. Learn more at icore.com. Okay. So clearly, as you said, there's three, three levels on current state. Maybe mm -hmm. you can give us a little insight into what kind of data are you analyzing when you're analyzing current state? So we look at both the institutional and the performance data. The institutional is more on the headcount, how many supervisors are there, uh, what's the ratio of management to the supervisor staffing, all the staffing related information. And also, you know, what's, uh, what's, what's the span of, you know, different population within the teams. And then on the performance side, we look at what are the targets that the client has given us and what, how are we performing against those uh, targets? So, for example, what's the productivity target? What is the turnaround target? Um, what's the quality? So all of that against, you know, what we have understood um, as to what the targets are. And then we look at at least six months of data and start analyzing it. Sure. You look at the results. Okay. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So thank you, Bhavna. So now you've given us some insight into the process by which you analyze current state. The goal is to get to future state assessment and recommendations. Give us some insight into what the future state analysis and process looks like. Yes, Bernie. So we, we now have, uh, you know, defined and analyzed the process and the data. We have listened to the calls. We have all the ammunition now to start recommending and start looking for the opportunities, uh, whether we have to automate, we have to digitalize something, uh, we have to recommend changes in the IBR, we have, you know, any technology related or the process related changes. Something could be as simple as, you know, any script related changes. So, and then we also have, because we work with hundreds of clients, right? So we know the industry best practices. So with that knowledge bank and all this analysis, we combine the two and, you know, uh, do a future map of, uh, of, of the process, of the business process. Okay, terrific. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that explanation. So now we've looked at current state assessment process, future state assessment process, why don't you share an example or two that you and your team have experienced? Oh, yes, Bernie, I can give you a couple of examples. Uh, so first one, we have this retail client that sends uh, customer service using emails. And then these emails, um, you know, results are sent to us and a person actually extracts the data out of the text and drops into an Excel file. Then we review the comments and categorize these issues, whether it is a process driven issue or a customer service driven uh, through RPA, which is Robotics Process Automation, we can automate the entire first part of this data collection process. So the person doesn't have to do it manually. Uh, then iCore's text analysis tool can actually process the customer verbatims and comments and automatically ca categorize them, as well as provide theme or trend analysis and even look at sentiment scoring. 
This way, the specialist can focus on analyzing the output and identifying what actions needs to be taken to help the customer. Uh, we are also working with the same customer on offering the NPS survey services, which is Net Promoter Score Survey, as a simple you know, SMS text to increase participation rates. Uh, and the other example would be, uh, this is from what we call as disclosure optimization. Uh, so once a customer accepts a credit card offer, there are disclosures that needs to be provided to the customer. Uh, we found that today the agent asks the customer to stay on the line and together they listen to an almost three minutes recording. Uh, we brought this to the attention of our client and recommended a simple pre-recorded disclosure queue where we would transfer the customer to. This way, the agent can leave and help the next customer. For the next phase, we are working with the client to see if we can offer the disclosure through a text link to make it even more convenient for our customers. So these are the two examples. So, Bob, in both examples that you shared, both client examples, it sounds to me like what your, you and your team did was you analyzed the process and you made recommendations on how to change the process, but also introduced a technology component to implement that process to either improve performance or optimize performance. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. So that, um, that happens often. Uh, there are times we would like I said in the beginning, that we do technology uh, recommendations as well, uh, you know, whether it's in-house or yeah. sometimes even vendor technology, we, we go ahead and do that. Sure. And what role does our speech analytics technology play in your current state assessment and future state recommendations? Oh, uh, Bernie, you know, I I can go on talking about this tool. We call it Volley. It's it's completely homegrown. Uh, the entire research, development, everything has happened, you know, in house. It makes the current assessment process so much more efficient and effective. We are actually very lucky to have it, um, you know, at Icor. Um, we are able to process one hundred percent of our calls using this tool. Um, Wally makes it really easy to filter down to specific calls that we want to target. Uh, for example, calls where NPS was negative or a specific call reasons such as uh, rate plan questions or calls with a large amount of non-talk time or, or a combination of all of this. Uh, this saves us an incredible amount of assessment time and allows us to focus our time on the areas of opportunity. You know, the, the entire uh, assessment is completely automated. It also provides vast amount of data to analyze and trend. We use this data to create business cases for things like RPA, agent assistance, uh, sorry, agent assistance or customer self-service handling. I can, I can go on talking about this tool, but I'll stop here. Bobney, you've shared two client examples. Do you have an internal example that pertains to the recruiting process at i -Corps? Oh, yes. Uh, so I did this assessment some time ago and the recommendations I have put forward recently. So they are still in progress. Um, there was this huge, humongous exercise that was done. We are trying to globally standardize our recruitment process. So uh, in the past, I had uh, mapped like Philippines and U.S. So recently I did Trinidad and I have come up with a bunch of recommendations. Uh, this is related to technology, uh, some API that needs to be built. Uh, then, of course, some automation and digitalization. All of that has gone into it. Yeah. And also uh, in Trinidad specifically, our hiring has gone up considerably. So, so with the same amount of recruiting folks, without adding more headcount to our recruitment team, we would be able to do much more work than we are doing today if we, if we implement all the changes recommended. That's great. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for um, explaining that. Well, Bhavani, um, this is an interesting topic. I'd love to keep discussing it with you, um, but I'm going to move to my final question. And I think you know what that is. It's tradition here on the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. We like to ask each one of our guests, when you're not working, what do you like to do for fun? <laughs> I read um, and I like, um, I do some yoga. Um, that's that's a sort of an exercise. Um, I like to travel. I have traveled quite a bit. Uh, that's what I like to do. 
Terrific. Thank you for sharing that. Bob, now thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast. You've given us a lot of great insights into i approach to analyzing the current state of client care programs, identifying the future state potential to either optimize the programs or to improve results for our clients. So those insights are very helpful and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. This was a good experience. I really enjoyed this. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Digitally Irresistible Podcast, where we cover the optimization of digital technologies and irresistible people, delivering a great employee and customer experience that has a measurable impact on the business. Brought to you by i Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss future episodes.